He stole back the rye? Yeah. Why? 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 Because he's off his rocker. That's why. So do the Rosses know? I don't know. If you wish to attain fluency in English, knowing idiomatic phrases is a must. English has emerged as the dominant world language, opening up a world of opportunities for those proficient in it. So buckle up, it's time to dive into the colorful world of English idioms. The name of our first phrase is catch a break. Imagine you're having one of those days where nothing seems to go right. Then, out of the blue, something good finally happens. That's exactly what it means to catch a break, to experience some good luck. Picture this. You're walking down the street worrying about how you'll pay for lunch, and suddenly you spot a $20 bill on the sidewalk. That's right, you've just caught a break. Now let's take a look at some video clips that provide examples of this phrase. It's actually a pretty simple process. You see, cyanoacrylates are monomers which polymerize on... Mm. <laughs> Alert, alert. alert, Sheldon ran away. Man, I cannot catch a break. <laughs> Here, after Leonard has finally found a romantic moment with Penny, Howard and Raj interrupt him about something. Leonard then says, I can't catch a break, meaning that he cannot seem to be able to find some good luck when he is with Penny. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go wander out in the rain for a while. But it's not raining. I can't catch a break. <laughs> you know what, Ross? You're not going anywhere. Here, Ross is feeling very sad about something and wants to wander in the rain. When Rachel notes that it's not raining outside, Ross says that he can't catch a break, meaning that he can't even have bad weather to be sad in. I'm sorry for your loss, but you're not the only one whose day has been a disaster. Could have killed me. Can't catch a break. <laughs> Here, after Stewart's comic store burns down, he almost has a piece of the building fall on him. He says that he can't catch a break because he thinks that if the ceiling had killed him, he would stop feeling sad. And just to summarize, catch a break means to have a piece of good luck. Now with all of the previous examples, we heard the phrase, can't catch a break. This obviously means, can't seem to get a little luck. The name of our second phrase is, up your alley. Imagine you have a hobby or something you're really good at. The phrase, up your alley, means exactly that. It's something that you're interested in or skilled at. For instance, if you're a big fan of video games and someone invites you to a gaming tournament, You'd probably say, that's right up my alley. It's just a fun way of saying that something is a perfect match for you. Now let's take a look at some video clips that provide examples of this phrase. I don't know what you had to tell her that for. You put me in a very difficult position, marine biologist. I'm very uncomfortable with this whole thing. Yeah, with all due respect, I would think it's right up your alley. Well, it's not up my alley. It's one thing if I make it up. Here, after Jerry lies and tells a woman that George is a marine biologist, George gets upset because it wasn't his choice. Jerry thinks that George shouldn't be upset because it's right up his alley. Jerry thinks that being a marine biologist is something that George could easily pretend to be. The only thing a loser like me is good for is taking beatings. There you go, that's the spirit. Homer, I seen prize fighters couldn't take a punch half as good as you. You know, boxing might be right up your alley. Really? Here, after Homer loses a fight, the bartender tells him that boxing might be right up his alley. The bartender is saying that Homer should consider being a boxer because punches don't hurt him too much. All right, perhaps this task will be a little bit more up your alley. I need you to count the bacteria spores on these Petri dishes. Yeah, there was something wrong with that detergent. That was way too bubbly. <laughs> Here, after Sheldon makes various mistakes in Amy's lab, 
she gives Sheldon a task that she thinks is more up his alley. Amy is saying that she thinks this task is more appropriate for Sheldon to do. And just to summarize, up your alley means it would be ideal for your skills or interests. All of us here at TD English hope that you're enjoying these videos, but we need your help. The YouTube algorithm doesn't really support us because we are a young channel. If you enjoy these videos, please share them on social media. We really do need your help. We also want to thank all of you for subscribing and helping us. The name of our third phrase is back to square one. Imagine you're building a tower of blocks and it topples over. What do you do? You start building it again from the base, right? That's what back to square one means. It's about beginning all over again because something didn't work out the first time. Like when you try to bake a cake and it doesn't rise, you don't give up. You go back to square one and try again. Now, let's take a look at some video clips that provide examples of this phrase. Ooh, if you take the northern route, there's a man in Illinois with a beard of bees. <laughs> Great, problem solved. But on the southern route, there's a chicken that plays tic-tac-toe. Well, back to square one. Here, after Joey realizes that Phoebe has left him confused as to how to travel across the country, he says, back to square one. Joey is saying that he is once again confused which way to go, and that he must reconsider everything again. I'm really regretting that I got you a Happy Meal. <laughs> I've worked so hard to get where I am, and I don't want to get sent back to square one because I'm pregnant. I understand how you feel. Here, Bernadette is afraid that since she has gotten pregnant, her employer will take away her current position at work. She refers to this as being sent back to square one, since she might be demoted to a job that offers little challenge to her. I rose to a position of respect, and I assumed my career would continue on that upward trajectory. Now here I am in my 30s. I'm back at square one. And frankly, it's frightening. Here, Sheldon is sad because he thinks that he has been unsuccessful as a scientist. He believes he has to go back to square one, and it scares him. He is saying that he feels like he has to start over in his career. And just to summarize, back to square one means to go back to the start or the beginning of something. The name of our fourth phrase is apples and oranges. When someone says apples and oranges, they're talking about comparing two things that really shouldn't be compared because they are so different. Imagine if someone asked which is better, a bicycle or a car. Well, that's like comparing apples and oranges. A bicycle is great for exercise and short trips, while a car can take you further and faster but isn't much for exercise. Now let's take a look at some video clips that provide examples of this phrase. Now, hold on. All canines instinctively know how to swim. Why wouldn't a werewolf have the same abilities? Well, they're not 100% wolf. They're a werewolf. That's only part wolf. It's like comparing apples to oranges. Thank you. <laughs> Here, Bernadette is telling Amy that she can't compare a wolf to a werewolf. She says that it's like comparing apples to oranges. Bernadette is saying that a wolf and a werewolf are two distinct entities, and that they can't be compared like that. You know that just last week she had Howard drive all the way to her uncle's house in Orange County to pick up her TV? You want Ted Leonard and me get your television from your ex-boyfriend? <laughs> apples and oranges here, Sheldon. <laughs> I'm telling you, that girl is a user. Here, after Penny becomes critical of a woman that she feels has treated Howard unfairly, Sheldon says that Penny has done something similar in the past as well. Penny is embarrassed and although Sheldon's comment is true, 
Penny says that it's like comparing apples and oranges. She's saying it's not a fair comparison. Sure, how much? Hundred dollars? You're on. Wait a second, wait a second. Count me in on this. You? Yeah. You'll be out before we get the check. I want to be in on this too. Oh, no, oh, no. no. Not it's all right. all right. all right. Why? It's so Why? Here, in this award-winning episode of Seinfeld, Elaine wants to enter into the same contest that the men are having. However, the men say that it's not fair because she's a woman and that it's apples and oranges. The men are saying that her participation wouldn't be fair to them because women don't act the same way as men. And just to summarize, compare apples to oranges refers to two groups of things that are completely different. Do you like the new format of this video? We are genuinely interested in your thoughts. Your comments and viewpoint matter a lot to us. Sharing your opinion below would help us in improving our future content. So feel free to comment below. The name of our fifth phrase is loose cannon. Imagine someone who doesn't follow the usual rules and often surprises everyone with their actions. This person can be described as a loose cannon. They're unpredictable and sometimes their actions can lead to unexpected problems. For example, if someone at work often makes rash decisions without thinking about the consequences, their colleagues might whisper, watch out, here comes the loose cannon. Now let's take a look at some video clips that provide examples of this phrase. And rounding out the crew, Mr. Piranha. He's a loose cannon with a short fuse, willing to scrap with anyone. Here, Wolf is introducing Mr. Piranha, a member of his gang, that he describes as a loose cannon. Wolf is saying that Mr. Piranha can be unpredictable and dangerous at times. Would you hold on? Before we get to the courthouse, I'd like to call on your skills as an actress. What is this? I've taken the liberty of scripting your appearance on the witness stand because, let's face it, you're somewhat of a loose cannon. Now, <laughs> Here, Sheldon has written a script for Penny to use when at the courthouse. Sheldon says that since she's a loose cannon, he needs to tell her exactly what to say. Sheldon is saying that since Penny is so unpredictable, he needs to provide her with a script of what she should say. Joey Tribbiani, I'm doing a scene with you today, and, well, I stink. You're in this picture? Yeah, yeah, I'm one of the cops who won't work with you because you're a loose cannon. <laughs> anyway, look, I'm really sorry, but I just, I, I stink. Here, after Joey is caught showering in another actor's dressing room, he explains that they're working together on a movie. Joey explains that he will be a policeman that is working with another cop who is described as a loose cannon. The older man will have this role as an unpredictable and dangerous cop that nobody wants to work with. And just to summarize, loose cannon refers to someone who is dangerously uncontrollable and unpredictable. The name of our sixth phrase is, shed some light. This phrase is a handy tool in our language toolbox. To shed some light means to explain or clarify something. Imagine you're in a dark room and someone turns on a lamp, suddenly everything becomes clear. That's exactly what this phrase does with confusing topics. For instance, a good teacher can shed some light on complicated subjects like algebra, making them easier to understand. Now let's take a look at some video clips that provide examples of this phrase. You two had any recent disagreements? Small point. Mr. Little here is a witness. Your questions seem to suggest he's a suspect. Maybe it's just me. You might try asking were there any cars parked in the street, any strange people in the area. You know, any information that might shed some light on who killed her. You do want to know, right? Here, a lawyer is telling a detective that he should be asking questions that will shed some light on who the killer is. The lawyer is telling the detective that he should be asking more appropriate questions that might explain who the actual killer is.
But first, I regret to say I see a youngster who looks troubled. What's your name, young man? Bart Simpson, sir. Hmm. Well, perhaps we can shed some light on your problem in a new segment exploring pre-adolescent turmoil. I call it Choices. I don't think so, sir. Bart. Here, a man says that he thinks Bart should participate in a program that will help shed some light on what is bothering him. The man is saying that Bart should participate in a special program to help explain why he is sad and what needs to be done to solve his problem. Hi, this is Paul Avery from the San Francisco Chronicle. I'm looking for someone to shed some light on a letter we received. Here, a reporter is calling someone that he is hoping can shed some light on a letter that they received. The reporter is hoping that the person he is talking with will be able to assist him in finding out who sent the letter to their newsroom. And just to summarize, shed some light means to explain or make something easier to understand. Our seventh set of phrases describes someone who is crazy. These colorful expressions include lost your marbles, out of your mind, off your rocker, out to lunch, and the lights are on but nobody is home. Each portrays a different shade of zaniness. For instance, if someone has lost their marbles, it suggests they're not quite on the ball, perhaps forgetting things or making odd decisions. It's a playful way to say someone isn't thinking clearly or acting rationally. Now let's take a look at some video clips that provide examples of these phrases. What? What's going on? Don't you know this box is being donated? It's under control, Woody. We have a plan. We're going to daycare! Daycare? What, have you all lost your marbles? <laughs> oh, it's just like my grandma with her parrot. <laughs> and after she lost her marbles with her remote control. Boy, this is gonna be good. <laughs> what the, Gerald? You lost your marbles? Don't get used to it, Gerald! Will you tell him he's out of his mind? Actually, I get what he's saying. <gasps> yes! Nine! Welcome back, buddy! Katie Lloyd will be my lawyer. Is he out of his mind? I'd suggest he plead insanity if I didn't think he'd kill me. Wanna go up again? Let's go again! Come on! Oh, great! <laughs> Help! Help! Help me! Help me, Lord! He's crazy! He's trying to kill me! But you'll see that he's out of his mind! He's crazy! He's trying to kill me! He stole back the rye? Yeah. Why? Why? Cause he's off his rocker! That's why! <laughs> so do the Rosses know? I don't know. We're up here trying to carry the water for him. I've carried more water for him than Gunga Din, for God's sake. And then not to say this, the guy's out to lunch. He's, you know, somebody's, the lights are on, but nobody's home down there. And just to summarize, Phrases used that describe someone who is crazy or acting foolishly include lost your marbles, out of your mind, off your rocker, out to lunch, and the lights are on but nobody's home. As we wrap up today's exploration of idiomatic phrases, remember just how delightful and practical these expressions can be. They add color and precision to our conversations, making communication not just clearer but also more engaging. To truly become fluent in English, it's crucial to keep learning and using these idiomatic phrases regularly. They help bridge the gap between basic understanding and real-world usage. So don't stop here. Keep diving into the colorful world of English expressions to truly master the language. If you would like to take a multiple-choice test related to these seven idioms, click on the link that follows.